welcome to this CNBC Africa special. I'm Godfrey Mutizwa. Now, you could describe Mauritius' place in Africa in two ways, or perhaps three ways. You could say big, small country, and uh, that is trying to become a small, big country in the continent. Or as an economist who's sitting here with us today would like to describe it, you could say it's the asset of nothing. It is the ability to use its liabilities to its advantage. Or perhaps you could go the conventional route and say it is the best place to do business, according to the World Bank, or it's the number one most competitive economy on the African continent, according to the World Economic Forum. I think all these attributes describe a fiercely competitive nation. And today, we are describing and trying to understand the role of Mauritius banking sector within Africa. My panelists are Mr. Ashok Obilak. He's head of research at the Bank of Mauritius. I also have uh, Mr. Anthony Withers, he's chief executive at uh, Mauritius Commercial Bank. And we've got Mr. Jean-Claude Leon, he's managing partner KPMG in Mauritius. And Mr. Daneshwa Damri, CEO of Bumshik Group. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Let me start first by, I want us to paint a picture of the banking scene within Mauritius, as well as the financial sector as a role, in terms of size, in terms of role. Let me begin with you, Dr. Obelak. Well, over time, Mauritius has developed a very strong financial sector, has a banking and non-banking sector, and it's very strongly regulated. Uh, it's 22 banks are operating right now. We have over 221 branches with a banking system has been moving very right in line with technology. Sure. Most banks today offer e-banking. So you have internet banking and you can be anywhere. You are within easy access. In fact, the system has been such that we are living now in a world of real shrinking dimension. Mm. So you can do business anywhere. We have uh, the facilities that are given and it's very safe your money is in safe hands. Yeah. You have access. People in the banking sector are courteous. So anybody wishing to do business in Mauritius can approach any bank in Mauritius. Yeah. And they are operate within well-regulated international norms. Profitability is yeah. high. Absolutely. I saw a figure that talks about, uh, I think, 20% return on equity. So very so strong. Those banks, of course, include international banks. It must be a challenge trying to manage those international banks as well as uh, the local banks and trying to balance their needs. It's always a challenge, but we have always adapted. We have been a little like the cockroach, right? We have always <laughs> adapted to the situation. We have never tried to be the dinosaur. Sure. OK, let's talk operationally here, because we've got uh, Mr. Withers, <coughs> who is CEO of uh, Mauritius Commercial Bank. Uh, Mauritius Commercial Bank, of course, is Mauritius' biggest bank. And I did hear some whisper somewhere that probably the most profitable as well. From an operational perspective, from operating within the Mauritius space, some of your challenges in terms of uh, trying to meet the needs, obviously, of your customers, as well as, of course, uh, meeting the regulatory requirements. Indeed. I mean, we have a 45% share of market in both deposits and in lending. And therefore, the challenge for us from an operational context is to increase the number of products on both the asset side and on the liability side that our customers can, can do. Mm -hmm. And we've been quite um, a pioneer in that respect in introducing a number of new ideas and new products for, for customers to use mm -hmm. as, as financial sophistication grows um, in, in, in this economy. But if I can add just one thing to what my, my colleague Dr. Al Albuluk has said. Sure. The, the basic metrics of the Mauritian banking system is that, is that it's very well capitalized. Mm. We, we as, as, a, as a group of banks, we have capital to asset ratios in the region of 15%, which is significantly higher than in many, many other countries around the world. And, mm. and that's one of the reasons why we're in such good shape, not just from a Basel II perspective, yeah. which was brought in um, quite early and, and, and a few years ago, but yeah. we're also in very good shape to address Basel III. There's no issues around which, Basel III. Which will be coming in, we think, later this year or possibly early, early next year. Yeah. And I think that's unusual because on the African continent, many, many countries are still not 
even Basel II compliant. Yeah. So I think this is a real feather in the cap for the regulator who has brought the banking industry through what has been a very difficult few years in the yeah. banking industry worldwide in a very well capitalized condition, well regulated, I certainly uh, yeah. uh, agree with that, yeah. but in a position to look at how best to address the opportunities, the clear opportunities that exist yeah. on the African continent. Yeah. Let's not forget that Mauritius is a small, relatively small economy, Absolutely. and therefore if it is to progress and grow, it needs to look at what are the opportunities outside Mauritius. Outside of Mauritius indeed. I allowed the regulator and the operator to speak before coming to you, John, Claude, because you, of course, as KPMG, are global and therefore bring in an outsider's perspective of the scene that we've just been describing. Your view, please. Well, good for you. have talked about the banking system in Mauritius. In fact, the banking is the retail, which is the local market, yeah. and international banking. Right. The retail market is well served. We've mentioned over 200 branches. So the furthest reach of the island is, uh, is serviced by the banks. But what is interesting for Mauritius is the international banking side. Right. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, Mauritius is seen as a gateway to Africa. And for a lot of these projects, there would be a lot of capital needed for these projects. And this is where Mauritius comes in. Right. And I think we are well poised with all the international banks uh, to be able to do that. At KPMG, we have been among the leaders in the finance sector. Yeah. We've uh, serviced a lot of banks. And I must say, as uh, Tony mentioned, in terms of regulation, in terms of capital adequacy requirement, we are well positioned. Yeah. I was hoping you would tell me that there are issues to be addressed that remain. No. <laughs> well, you know, there are always issues to be addressed, You're but the these are not major issues, <laughs> uh, what we call the housekeeping issues that will always yeah. be. As auditors, that's what we look for. Yeah. But I think we are we, we're good for, for the banking sector. Okay. Let me bring our final member of the panel, uh, Mr. Damri. You are a financial services company, but you are more on the capital market side. So from what we've been discussing so far, perhaps if there's anything you want to contribute, please feel free to do so. But let's bring in also the other side of the financial system, which of course is the capital markets. A, br yes. a brief and quick synopsis. Th thank you, thank you, Godfrey. First of all, I would like to add something uh, on, the, on the banking side. Sure. Uh, my, the core business of my company, Pomeshk, is uh, cloud data centers and cloud technologies. The reason I'm bringing that in is because I'm very passionate about technology as a transformative tool, enabling financial markets, and especially to enable what I would call sustainable, equitable, and inclusive uh, development yeah. uh, in Africa. Now, one of the, Mauritius is an interesting business model that many banking centers in Africa could use. For instance, today, uh, in Mauritius, most of the banks can issue, uh, you know, debit cards, uh, credit cards, prepaid cards, yeah. mobile banking, uh, online banking uh, yeah. to their customers. The banking penetration rate and especially financial inclusion for the uh, unbanked also in Mauritius is very high. Right. So I will not talk too much about that, but that's something that probably Tony, the, the banking sector of Mauritius yeah. can lead as an example sure. uh, yeah. for, for Africa. That's true. So coming, coming to the... Uh, to the capital market side. This, this leads me to uh, Mauritius Financial Center as a whole. Right. We've had a traditional, what I would call global business sector. Then we've had a very good technology platform. Yeah. And <coughs> we've had a, a, a capital market that has been here for some time. Mauritius, the vision of Mauritius is to become the financial hub uh, for, for Africa. Right. And, and it faces very stiff competition. We have stiff. The country has, uh, has stiff competition. The providers here have stiff uh, competition. And one of the sectors where Mauritius really wants to be the leader in financial services in Africa is capital markets. Right. So for, for many years, you have countries, uh, companies have spoken about a, a, a pan-African capital market, a pan-African stock exchange, a yeah. pan-African commodities exchange, yeah. a pan-African derivatives exchange, a pan-African clearing house. Yeah. It's all been talk. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange has actually tried it. Yes. And it hasn't it, worked. It hasn't worked. It, they have tried for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't worked. Uh, my company, we have been working on a similar project for some time now, uh, and we hope to go live very soon. I, I believe that Mauritius presents, the Mauritius Financial Center presents a value proposition yeah. and a sustainable competitive advantage that 
South Africa does not possess. And this You're is why we successful. It's a similar project. What do you mean? Yes, uh, we have been working on an electronic Pan African uh, stock exchange okay. based out of Mauritius. Okay. This is to start with, and it will gradually encompass an electronic Pan African commodities exchange, an yeah. electronic Pan African derivatives exchange, and finally an electronic Pan African clearing house. Okay. 2014 to about 2018, I would say. When? We hope to go live should we get all the regulations and everything in Yeah, Russia. exactly, because I was looking yes, at him and I'm going yes, to ask him we, we <laughs> how, what a challenge that will be. Yes, yeah, we have submitted the application to the uh, Mauritius Financial Services Commission. So we hope to get the license uh, soon. Uh, and our target to go live is quarter three, 2015. Okay, we'll be watching that space definitely without a shred of doubt. Now, we talked earlier about the challenge of managing the international banks. Now, he brings in another equation on the capital market side. I would imagine it will be quite a challenge to try to understand the regulations in all these African countries, and there are, what, 54 of them, 55 if you add Somaliland, I always say. And how difficult do you think that uh, such a task would be? We're a small country with big ambition, and you can I, see the I, I private sector. I said small sector. country, big yeah. country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can see yeah. uh, the private sector already taking the initiative. Yeah. So the, the important thing here, that one of the strengths of Mauritius is that there has always been a synergy between the uh, government or the uh, regulatory services yeah. and the private sector, the operational services, and uh, usually what we will do, we will investigate and go, go into the various issues that are involved. And usually the regulatory institutions, they take time, they take the precautions, mm. they advise, and when they give something, they want it to be robust, mm. right? They will in inquire. So I don't, I, it's a challenge yeah. for the regulatory as it is for the private sector. Yeah, yeah. So this is welcome, we are thinking Regional, we are thinking I think global. You've got a green light. Yeah, we are thinking global. Yeah, and Mauritius cannot stay isolated as an island. It is an island with a big, right, sea yeah. uh, area, but also it has it is the gate to Africa, yeah. and Africa is growing. So we have to shift, right, to shift. Yeah. We are part of Africa sure. through Comesa. We are part of Africa through SADC. Yeah. we are part of Africa through the Indian Ocean Rim. And uh, we have always now, if you look at uh, the general policy of government, yeah. there is a very uh, decided, very determined approach to go to Africa. And in 2050, yeah. many of the African <coughs> countries would be among the most performing countries in the world. So we are, we are looking <coughs> at, for example, uh, the world, the wealth report yeah. says that Nigeria will be among the, ten, uh, among the six most performing countries in the world, right? So you can see if we are having companies like this, this yeah. is uh, this uh, is is Arbinger's uh, big future for Mauritius. Yeah. So I want us in the next part of uh, the program to discuss what Mauritius financial system offers the rest of the continent. But before I do, I want us to talk about some of the challenges within the Mauritian financial system itself that need to be addressed. Let's talk about transparency. I mean, this has been an issue that has come up from time to time, and of course, Mauritius has vigorously defended itself. What steps are being made to ensure that those lingering doubts that have come up, I saw one AFDB report talking potentially about it, to make sure that they go away? Yeah, part of the the thing is, you know, some some uh, authorities are not authorities really, but some journalists, especially from uh, you are not looking uh, at me, Asia, are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Asia, Asia Confidential. I don't know where they cook certain things. But <laughs> what you look at our legislation, yeah, it's very right. It's very stringent. There is very strong monitoring, and even the moment there is any doubt or anything, for example, only recently the Supreme Court of Mauritius froze the assets of one company. Right. It's just on, on doubts, but then the investigation is going on, which is enough evidence yeah. that uh, we are a country which is very transparent. Oh. So now the authorities are vigilant, you're saying? They, they are vigilant. And if you look at the index of the World Heritage, right, index of Wall Street, yeah, yeah. here they have done something objective, and we are among the 10 best countries in the world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anthony, mm. I don't want to get you into trouble. But are there Thank issues you. perhaps that ought to be addressed? I mean, obviously, a better functioning system is better for everybody. Mm. Mm. 
I certainly agree with what Dr. Albulak has said, that I think that the legal system here is very strong, mm -hmm. and it's something that the country can be proud of. Sure. Um, maybe if I can turn the discussion in terms of challenges yeah. um, towards development of the bond markets here, because I think... Within Mauritius. Within Mauritius, because I think that there's a lot of work that has been going on, certainly behind the scenes, but the next step now needs to be taken, which is to encourage much greater secondary market trading yeah. um, and depth. Um, and I think the government and Bank of Mauritius have a role to play mm. to establish perhaps some benchmark bond issues instead of a long maturity structure where right. they've got bonds at different maturity dates to combine everything into perhaps two, three or four benchmark issues so that much greater depth can be entertained in terms of the trading in the secondary market. This would have significant um, advantages for the development of the derivatives market, which my yeah, colleague Mr. 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 Bumri mentioned about, because yeah. as yet we don't really have a, a, a liquid or, or, or deep interest rate swap market, which would allow customers to go from floating rate to fixed and vice versa, yeah. um, let alone um, a currency swap market. Right. Now, I think Mauritius... Even with g -board. Correct. But I think there is the opportunity in Mauritius to develop the government bond market to be similar along the lines of the developed world. All the building blocks are in place, yeah. but it now needs the courage, I think, to combine a multitude of different maturities and bond distances into three or four benchmark issues yeah. and to enable secondary market trading to take place. The Once that is done, yeah. then the door can open to looking at the bond markets that are developing in various African countries. We sure. discussed earlier yeah. that a number of big countries like Kenya, like Nigeria, yeah. like, like Ghana, well, like Bo 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 Botswana, yeah. Tanzania, they've all issued sovereign bonds over the last year. Yeah. We've, we've been a pioneer in introducing the Africa bond fund, but I think that there's a big opportunity here to offer a service to investors yeah. Yeah. who want to look at not only equity, private equity, but also yeah. investing in sovereign bonds. Yeah. They need a mechanism and, a, uh, and an institutional and a legal framework to do so. Yeah. And I think Mauritius has got a big opportunity is to that show the way to here. look at. <coughs> yes, yeah. it is, and I think uh, the stock exchange. Please feel free to contribute because yeah. I don't want to freeze you the out of this conversation. Of but Mauritius, you need to answer that one. The stock exchange of Mauritius, I think, uh, they have taken steps, and uh, they are looking at it. In fact, they are introducing uh, new products, and they are looking into Africa. They have introduced uh, their one initiative, uh, which would look at the. Uh, exploration of mineral resources mm -hmm. and uh, they are also within that uh, they know it's very difficult to get big uh, investors so they have also divided in categorized it into small investors where they have okay. a limit where they can invest in it and yeah. they have made it very very flexible right giving you time yeah. that for example somebody can start right with, with these funds and you have five years until you can get all your members who are participating in it right, right as investors okay. so it's a very fle flexible they have introduced then there is the uh, deposit uh, the, de the deposit uh, well the words is just escaping what me. is the deposit deposit, deposit receipts yeah, yeah yeah deposit receipts and there is the Mauritius deposit receipts all these are new products mm -hmm. they are looking for new players new products yeah. in the market yeah so w we are dynamic but as usual, we always uh, go very cautiously in order to avoid teething problems, yeah, for sure. and then we go at mm. cruising rate. Absolutely. Mm. Are they moving fast enough for you? Are they moving fast yeah, enough uh, for you guys? In fact, I want to comment on what you've mentioned, Godfrey. You've mentioned two topics. The first one is uh, transparency, yeah. uh, meaning compliance, etc. And the second, you've mentioned about the challenges for the banking sector. Yeah. The first one on transparency, what I'd like to say is that a lot of comments that is being said about Mauritius is actually very unfair. Uh, Mauritius has subjected itself to the FSAP, Financial Sector Assessment Program, right. and we've come up very well on that. We are also on the OECD whitelist. We've got one of the uh, toughest legislation on anti-money laundering. KYC requirements for opening new bank accounts mm -hmm. is very strict. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned that as a service provider in the sector, sure. and this is what actually happens. Mm -hmm. So coming An to important say, service provider because you're an auditor. That's right, because I see uh, both on the consumer's side yeah. and from the banking side as well to know what are the difficulties, etc. Sure. But I must say the legislation in place is very rigid, 
So to say that we are not compliant, we're not transparent is not true. Yeah. And on top of that, Mauritius has also signed the agreement for a free exchange of information, not fishing expedition, but exchange of information. Yeah. That's the first comment I wanted to make on the transparency. Okay. Okay. On the second one, you've mentioned challenges. To me, when we look at Mauritius as an IFC, what that entails is that how do we help the region? I would make a comparison to Singapore has been for Asia, sure. providing funds for China particularly. And if you look at the, the Caribbean basin, uh, Cayman Islands, yes. ADI, etc., yeah. they've been very good for the South America as well. And if we look at Africa, I think Mauritius has got the potential to serve what Singapore and Cayman has been for their region. Right. But to do that, we need a l more, maybe more investment banks in mm -hmm. Mauritius, mm -hmm. and I think that's something I would really look forward to, yeah. having more investment banks, having really that capital market that uh, Tony mentioned, yeah. this is the challenge we have. And only then, when we reach that stage, can we say we are the gateway for Africa. Maybe we, we, we want to be the gateway, but not quite there. Okay, building towards there. Yes, I, I would like to add uh, two points. Sure. One is that the, financial, the domestic financial sec services sector has been here for about 15 years in its current form. And the, the Mauritius government has a clear vision that uh, they want Mauritius to be the Singapore, the Switzerland of Africa. Yeah. Then there's the second vision that we want to move up from a middle income economy to a high income economy. That's the government's vision. Mm -hmm. Then you have the private sector's vision that Mauritius uh, market is limited and therefore we look at Africa as a market. Sure. So you have all of a sudden an alignment of the vision and of their interest of the private sector and the government and the regulator at the same time because right. this is where the Mauritius government and the Mauritius private sector is moving. Yeah. Now, while we are moving there, there are a lot of challenges. For sure. Challenge number one, one of the competitive advantage for Mauritius will be the speed of execution because mm. other jurisdictions will not be lying idle. Sure. Everybody's working. Maybe we have an edge today, but to sustain that edge, the speed of execution is very important. And I think the private sector is quite fast, and maybe there is something that uh, the regulatory side, the government side can, can look into probably speeding up. Can pick up from the private sector. Yes, that, 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 is, that, is, that is one aspect. The, the number two is the skills uh, and talent infrastructure. Mm. So we, we've had a certain financial services sector and we've had a certain skills and talent infrastructure. Now sure. to move up the value chain, we need a different uh, type of uh, people uh, in Mauritius, a different type of skills which we do not have. Yeah. So either we develop that organically or we invite uh, people from, from all outside. over the world uh, to come into Mauritius, yeah. challenge number two. Absolutely. So it's a big challenge, that one. It's especially political, isn't it? Yes, yes. So this is, this is uh, challenge, challenge number two. Yeah. Uh, and challenge uh, number, so I talked about the government side speeding up. Yeah. I talked about the... The uh, skills side. The, the skills side. And number three, Mauritius, like the African continent, needs access to finance uh, to mm. develop its economy. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, the third challenge which I will say, access to finance. Yeah. And if you look at the three challenges that I've said that Mauritius faces, and if you look at all the economic reports in Africa, yeah. it's the top three challenges that actually the entire African continent faces. You yeah. just have to add infrastructure. Absolutely. Uh, in that. So Mauritius is a, is a small, big country, whatever you call it, yes. but it portrays the African continent very well. But certainly doable from your perspective. <laughs> yes, it's already, uh, if, if we look With at a little it, more speed. Yeah. We, we, we have signed 37 DTA, right, double taxation agreement. Right. And for a long a number of years, India was the biggest recipient from, from Mauritius, of investment from Mauritius. Right. But if you look at the statistics recently, there has been a slight decrease from the trend from Mauritius, and there has been a diversion of resources to Africa. Right. You are going to find that from the statistics that more funds have been going to Africa. So the process is already Through on. Through Mauritius. Right. Through Mauritius is already on. And uh, the, uh, as, uh, the stock exchange of Mauritius, they are already targeting, there is also, they are targeting niche market in Africa. Mm. Mm. Right. So 
in specific sectors like in exploration mineral resources right. as well as a niche market yeah. in Africa. Yeah. So the work is already done and it's going to increase in the years to come as Africa, as Africa, if I can say if the giraffes uh, by long neck lengthens further. Yeah, yeah, and okay. it's certainly so been we are, lengthening, we are there's no doubt take, about that. To take advantage mm -hmm. of that. You know, if you, we look, because Mauritius has built a reputation, we are number one in Ibrahim Index. We are For number one, yeah. in, uh, right, number ni uh, ni 19 or 20 in the world doing business and number one in Africa. Yeah. We are among the eight best uh, countries on the world, uh, on the World Heritage, all, uh, on the Wall Street World Heritage Index. Okay, yeah. and Mauritius has played a good role on the continent in terms of Comesa, in yeah. terms of SADC. Yeah. So, so what we're saying is that Mauritius certainly has made strides. There are some issues that need to be addressed, but there's no question that Mauritius does have something to offer now the continent. Now, when we come back in the second half, we want to offer what it is that Mauritius financial sector can offer Africa, especially as Africa grows at its fastest pace, perhaps since the end of colonialism. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching a special debate on uh, Mauritius' role in Africa's development, particularly focusing on the role of uh, the financial sector. I've got with me here my experts uh, who are helping me to answer this question. Dr. Ashok Obilak, he's head of research at the Bank of Mauritius, and Mr. Anthony Withers, he's chief executive of Mauritius Commercial Bank. Uh, Jean-Claude Leon, managing partner, KPMG in Mauritius, and last but not least, uh, Dinesh Damri, CEO of uh, Boomshik Group. Okay, so. I think we've laid the foundation in terms of uh, where Mauritius stands and what it can offer. The continent is now what we want to develop and understand. Let me begin from the private sector because I think perhaps there might be more from the private sector than from the government. If I've slighted you, I, I ask for your forbearance. Let me start with you. In terms of uh, where you are within your company and what you're planning to do on the continent, you've talked about the potential development of an African stock exchange. Apart from that, what else can Mauritius offer? Because you are also in technology. Yes. Okay. So Mauritius today has a very sound financial center, uh, which is very attractive mm -hmm. for investments into Africa from overseas yeah. and from also from intra-Africa uh, investments. This is what we have in terms of a legal and fiscal jurisdiction. Yeah. The second thing uh, that we have is a very fast developing technology sector. And as you would know, financial services is largely technology. Mm. Today, technology is the backbone. So Mauritius- We are in cyber city after We are that, in right? a cyber city. Well, we are in the a very technologically advanced we've, building of the MCB. We've broadened the boundary we've of broadened the We've broadened the boundaries <laughs> of the cyber city, yes. <laughs> and it's green. <laughs> yes. And it's a very green building. So Mauritius is fast moving up the value chain in the technology center also. My company, Bhumesh, is the first company uh, that set up, let's say if I take payments for, for, for the banking sector, yeah. we were the first uh, tier four PCI DSS Visa MasterCard certified company in sub-Sahara Africa as a third party company that was providing services to, to banks uh, in What does Africa. that mean? That means, let us say you have a bank in, uh, I'll take any, any country, I'll take, let's say you have a bank in Mozambique. Right. Uh, and the bank in Mozambique wants to issue uh, debit cards, well, credit cards or prepaid cards to its uh, customers in Mozambique. Or it wants to enable mobile banking to mm. its uh, customers in Mozambique or electronic banking. Yeah. Now, for a bank in Africa to go and invest in such a technology, A, it costs a lot of money. Sure. Two, you need to have the skills and the expertise. Sure. And then thirdly, I, th I always believe that the business of the bank is to provide banking services to its customers and not to spend board meetings and management time talking about which technology to invest. So, Mr. Withers, please. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, uh, so what, what, what we do basically in Mauritius, like yeah. you had MCB, you had SBM, the large domestic banks, yeah. they, they have their internal systems. Whereas you have the so-called smaller domestic banks, like I can take their name, MPCB uh, or Bank One, for instance, yeah. Uh, which today offer exactly the same services that an SBM or an MCB in Mauritius is offering. 
their size did not allow them to invest in such mm. technology. But we provided them with this technology on a pay-as-you-go model. Okay, we've got ourselves men now working at work here. Okay, yeah. let's come from your side, Mr. Withers, because mm. obviously you are operating and you yeah. have uh, uh, pretty much dominated the Mauritian space. Within the continent, what can you do? What can you offer? We've reached the stage where approximately half of our revenues are now coming from outside Mauritius. So we haven't exactly been idle or just resting on the laurel of a strong domestic market share. What's been the strategy? The strategy has been to grow in our, what we call our presence countries, which right. are the island economies of the Maldives, the Seychelles, um, Reunion next door, Mozambique, and uh, Madagascar. Um, Mozambique obviously being on the continent of, of, of South Africa. And then also to pursue a bank for bank strategy. And this is the, this is the really interesting part of what's going bank on. Bank for bank strategy. Yes. So developing relationships with top five, top ten banks in about 20 sub-Saharan, predominantly sub-Saharan African countries. Right. Most of these countries, as you mentioned earlier, Godfrey, are growing at 5%, their GDP at 5% per mm. annum. There's a nice stat I like to use. Seven of the ten fastest mm. growing economies in the world are African. Mm. There's According a very strong, to the IMF. There's a very strong correlation between energy growth, energy demand, yeah. and um, GDP growth. Sure. So all of these countries are importing 5% more oil year on year for electricity, for transportation purposes. Now, the oil majors insist on having letters of credit which are um, endorsed by investment grade rated banks. Right. And herein lies the problem. Most of the banks in the African continent, they don't have. They are not investment grade, grade. grade yes. and it will probably take them at least three to five years to get there. Mm. We are. We have a BAA1 Moody's rating, and so we have moved into this space to confirm letters of credit for the import of oil, right. um, which are generally arranged by the equivalent of STC or a, or a, a big state-owned importing company, right. be it in Zambia or in Kenya or Nigeria. Um, which then asks a leading European or a leading South African bank to arrange a syndicated letter of credit right. with the local banks, and we then confirm the letter of credit okay. using our rating. Now, this business, this basic trade finance business of ours, yeah. has been growing consistently at 15 to 20% now for the wow. last four or five years. It's not just 5% GDP growth in the African continent. It's also been the um, withdrawal of a certain amount of trade financing capacity by the European banks as they look to adjust their capital to asset ratios. Yeah. Meeting a 9% Basel III capital to asset ratio you can do in two ways. Yeah. You can raise capital yeah. or you can trim assets and it's the trimming of assets that's still going on okay. in a European context and it's into that space in our own modest way Where that we have moved decisively in. and we now have really good relationships because that's the philosophy of Mauritius Commercial Bank is to establish good relationships um, with its customers yeah. and from which we're now finding that other sorts of business is, is starting to develop. Um, we are, we, we are carrying out the um, management of all the credit cards and debit cards for one of the leading Ghana banks, banks in Ghana. How does it, that it, work? It, so, well, it's, 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 we, we have a subsidiary which Bumish knows, um, <laughs> sorry, Dinesh knows extremely well, <laughs> uh, which, is, which, is a, which is a competitor of his. Yeah. Sure. We, we, we have 50% of the cards market here. We have the latest technology supporting our debit card and credit card platform. We have availability on that platform. Yeah. We are making it available to certain local banks as well as banks in Africa to run their credit card and debit card operations. Okay. And we can do that because of the internet and the, and the submarine cable links that come now to Mauritius. Right. We, can, we can manage that with backup. Yeah. You want to come in, yes. but I also want him to come in, and I want him to come in. You quickly come in because I want him to, to, to talk about yes. some of the risks to this approach. Sure. It was obviously mm -hmm. you need to answer to that. Th this is what I wanted to, to put uh, to the debate today, that Mauritius can be, like uh, what their subsidiary, my company, and maybe some other companies will come up, can be the transactional banking mm -hmm. center of excellence for Africa. Right. This is where we are moving. The space is there, you the say. The space is there. The opportunity is there. The opportunity there. is here. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think, Godfrey, <coughs> you've mentioned about the Mauritius being an IFC and what are the benefits of using Mauritius as an IFC. Indeed. Uh, I think the doctor mentioned about the treaties, the tax treaties. Yeah. 
very often we look only at the treaties and say, oh, this is a tax reason why we should use militias. But we've moved away from there now, eh, over and above having the treaties with a lot of these other countries. Eh, as an investor, you want investment protection. Yeah. We have a lot of IPPAs with the African countries. Mm -hmm. eh, sometimes it is, it is very difficult for private equities, for uh, investors to go and deal with a country on a country basis right. and using Mauritius to sort as a, to facilitate those investments in those countries. We have a, a rule of law and the ultimate uh, court is the Privy Council. So it's not only in the hands of the local courts. Mm, so mm. we have uh, that as well. We have an educated labor force. Uh, if you have an investment, uh, you are domiciled in Mauritius. You need all your back office work to be carried out. Mm. We've got that as well. Mm. And we are in a convenient time zone. Sometimes when you do investments in Africa, you also do business in Asia or yeah. in the US. True. And you catch both uh, Asia and US at the same time. And you have also a, what I would say, a quality of life that Africa doesn't offer. Mm. Mm. I think these are compelling reasons why using Mauritius is makes sense. Yeah. And over and above those, I've mentioned about, you know, we've discussed about the banking system sure. and being the transactional bank for, for all these projects. Yeah. I mean, all these reasons that are available it position Mauritius as an ideal location to look at Africa and for investments in Africa. Yeah. Are there risks to the foray into Africa, obviously, because now these banks are going to be operating in jurisdictions where there are a different set of rules and regulations? Yeah, in any business, you will have risks where there are calculated risk. But in Mauritius, if you look at the fine, you take as example during the financial crisis, yeah. banks all over the world, and especially in the US, they were facing acute problems. Mm. In Mauritius, we had a paradox. Not only they did, they were very resistant, they were very resilient, yeah. they made profit. Right? South Africa would raise And they have been well. very prudent <laughs> in managing the resources. Yeah. And part of the reason, if you see by international standard, you look at the Basel II, they suggest 8% mm -hmm. the capital asset there, right? Yeah. And uh, the Bank of Mauritius gives instruction for 10%. Yeah. But in practice, if you go for the figures for the last three years, it has been varying from 16, 15.8, 16.7%. Yeah. Is this so because, isn't it because these guys are, you know, their balance sheets are lazy and they, 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 they certainly should be using this capital? I, I, <laughs> I, 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 no, on the contrary. I think, sure. I think as, a, as an emerging market, um, upper middle income country, it's important for banks to be overcapitalized to a degree. It sends a message of confidence and strength to the various stakeholders, whether it's the regulator, whether it's the rating agencies, sure. whether it's the government, whether it's, it's customers, customer. whether it's staff, whether it's counterparties. Uh, you know, managing your capital close to the regulatory minimum yeah. would not mean would mean that you would not have any cushion for a shock. Uh, uh, and I which think, is what happened with, you know, the, with, I, with the US I, banks. I always say that, 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 that banks are inherently fragile institutions because they are geared a yeah. number of times on their capital. Sure. And people should never forget that. And that's why it's important to have a, a capital cushion to yeah. cope with the odd issue that crops up from time to time. Point taken, point taken. From a regulatory perspective, what you can you offer the continent? Well, from a regulator, we can give them confidence, right? We can say that if there is any injustice or anything happening, we yeah. will intervene in that. Okay, and the, the Bank of Mauritius has intervened. The moment there is any doubt or anything, yeah. right, in the past in 1996, the one we were not satisfied with uh, two banks and actions were taken up, sure. right? So this sent the right signal. This sent the right signal to them. But as Jean-Claude also has said, here we have people who can do these operations for them. You yeah. see, we have an educated labor force. Mm -hmm. Right, he has preempted a few of the things that I wanted to say. Okay. We have <laughs> the rule of law, the legislation. So, yeah. We are a, a well-known liberal Westminster type of democracy. Yeah. Okay. But what about and other African central banks? I would imagine the other and four are where you yeah, guys we, we interact good, and you if exchange ideas. If we ideas. take, for example, there are regular meetings in the SADC among mm. the, the central banks yeah. and good relations. In fact, if you find in the annual dinner, right? We invited one of the leading uh, uh, governors of the bank to come to Mauritius and to share his experience. And he is known to have been one of the most transparent uh, 
person who wanted to put mm. order and right. all these uh. in the banks. It has a good reputation. Yeah. So this is the sort of uh, coordination and with the South African uh, Central Bank, there is good liaison with the, the, the officers and the banks that are regular meetings mm. at mm. the level of SADC. Mm. Yeah, but okay. if, if, sorry to interject. Yeah, please. Uh, I think more important than looking at regulation is to look at the service providers on the center. How does the service providers uh, react? How do they behave? Yeah. I mean, if you have the service providers that behave in a very undisciplined, a dubious manner, no matter how legislation is, it will yeah. never protect the investors. True, true. So I think uh, what is important is to look at the conduct of the service providers right. and to see who's the re regulator, what is their role, though they have to regulate, but also to facilitate business. And this is why we are uh, the, the, the country ranking first in ease to do business. Mm, mm, mm. I wanted to come to you as well on the issue yeah, of, yeah. Uh, if I could. Yeah, I was yeah, just looking in. at that. Right? If we, we look at you know, whatever international or, uh, right agreement we have, like the Basel Suite that is going, yeah. many of the countries, including even very advanced countries, they, they look at it as something that is insurmountable and they are even trying to postpone it. It was initially set for 2015 mm -hmm. yeah. and now they are trying to postpone it to 2018. Right. But yeah. in Mauritius, right? In Mauritius, Part of it we are already implementing right. even before it mm. is enforced. And the other aspects of in terms of liquidity and, and so on and so forth, yeah. we, we don't feel it's an insurmountable mm. obstacle. We mm. feel we will be able to do it fa uh, fairly quickly. Mm. Okay. I wanted to bring in the issue of uh, the possibility of uh, these banks going into the continent and potentially bringing in risks that are not inherent in Mauritius. Well, if, if I can tackle that, we yeah. are limiting ourselves to relatively short-term trade finance-based risks. Um, and we're doing business as, with, as I mentioned, top five, top ten banks. Yeah. That just as we are in the top five, top ten banks and are looked after by a strong regulator, sure. the quality of regulation has increased significantly in a number of African countries. And we feel that we're mitigating the mm. risks by focusing on mature products, short-term duration, yeah. and links with top five, top ten banks that we consider to be systemically important but in their own country. Those are things that you also consider when you go into these countries, mm. the regulatory environment in yes. those countries. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we make a point of visiting the central, you know, the, the, the equivalent of Bank of Mauritius in a number of African countries. Yeah. So we're, we're well wired in and we're very focused on, on limiting the risks to short duration, mature trade finance products right. for known commodities where there's an excellent default record. Right. If you don't pay for your oil, you don't get the next shipment. And then <laughs> the cars so don't run, the buses don't run, the, <laughs> the lights don't go off. So, so for those reasons, we, yeah. we, we, we are very focused on yeah. this particular niche. Let's talk about the competition that uh, Mauritius faces in trying to establish itself as the financial hub of Africa. I'll come to you, but let me begin with you, because you raised one of the issues with this technology which you are providing. I would imagine when you look across the African continent, you look at South Africa and you say, surely it must be one of the stronger uh, competitors for Mauritius. Kenya as well, because of the Savannah Valley uh, development, uh, Nigerians would always like to think themselves very innovative, very creative. What else do you see? And what advantage do you potentially see Mauritius having over these other geographies. Yes, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll respond to that uh, in connection with the capital markets project uh, yeah. that I am doing because okay. it was very, very important uh, to determine which jurisdiction to base the electronic stock exchange. Yeah. And we considered Joburg, we considered Kenya, we considered Botswana, we considered Ghana uh, in Africa. We, because it's a global project, we even had to look at mature IFCs like Singapore, mm. like London, like Toronto, and we came to the conclusion that Mauritius for Africa was the best jurisdiction. Why? Exactly, why? I'll come to why. One, we have a very good uh, legal and fiscal regime so far, okay. which has been talked about. Yeah. Two, I will say the regulator of Mauritius is a value proposition and a competitive advantage uh, for uh, Mauritius. Even though he wants you to move fast, he's still yes, very much Yes, even though I want them to move fast, but doing. they are a competitive yeah. advantage compared to all the other, <laughs> the other central banks uh, and the, regulatory. The, the central yeah. banks, the, yeah. the various. London is very mature. You know, they're very heavy, for instance. Yeah. Uh, third, I will say, uh, Mauritius is politically neutral, uh, in the sense that you needed a Switzerland for Europe, you needed a Singapore for for Asia, mm. and it's high time that 
although there are a lot of debates about Mauritius right now in Africa, especially in Nigeria and South Africa, yeah. I would say that it's high time that we accept that Mauritius uh, plays that neutral part in Africa. Mm -hmm. The other value proposition that I would give of Mauritius is the government of Mauritius itself, because the government of Mauritius is playing an increasingly important political and economic diplomacy with all the African countries. Yeah. Last but not least, we are Africans. Absolutely. I think one of the points that you haven't mentioned, yes. which I must mention as an African, is that it's one of the few countries yes. where Africans are allowed to come in visa Absolutely. free, That's with the I mean. exception of a few yes. countries. Yes. I think it's an important point, yes. which and Donald Kaberuka yes. was addressing yes. the other day. And, and really may I just, add, may I just add the last uh, point really? on that? The project that we are doing is by Africans, with Africans, for Africans. Okay. That sounds <laughs> right. <rhyming. laughs> Let, let me come to you, Jean-Claude. Now, obviously, I mean, we, we, we're talking about the technology here, but there's services as well that potentially Mauritius has a stronger track record than many other parts of the continent, particularly these other up-and-coming new economies, so your Mozambiques, your Angolas, your Ghanas, etc. Uh, you see, Godfrey, when we talked about Mauritius as an IFC, and what people doesn't realize, using an IFC to have look, ongoing projects yeah. is really about wealth creation. And, and you've mentioned about the competition from South Africa and Kenya. Yes. I don't see them as, as competitors. No. You know, we are all in the business of growing Africa. Sure. And Mauritius, the main component that we have, and I think which is lacking in Africa, is the stability. The government is demo democratically elected. We are a stable uh, administration. Uh, we have a rule of law, as I've mentioned. Uh, we have the, the educated uh, population to do the work. Yeah. And there are a number of these reasons and ease to do business. That is what differentiates Mauritius from the other jurisdictions. And I think what Mauritius has to do now, mm -hmm. uh, we, don't, we cannot be the hub for everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, you, if you talk about Luxembourg, they are the fun jurisdiction. Yeah. If you talk about Bermuda, they are for insurance. Right. Mauritius, we need to look at what we want to take the lead yeah. in, in, in whatever and sector it is. And it's all financial services, we Yes, say. it's all okay. in financial services. Okay. Uh, Anthony, you, mm. you spoke earlier about the Africa Bond Fund. I mm. wanted to explore that a little bit. Mm. And I think I remember reading somewhere that there are some what, 950 funds that are registered here in Mauritius? Yes. Now, in terms of growing that space, is there competition within that space and are there opportunities there within that space? I'll, I'll come to you and I'll mm. after you. The opportunity is that I think that now that the sovereign bond market has become established in half a dozen African countries over the last year, we'll see repeat issuance and we'll probably see greater depth to that market as some of the leading banks and corporates yeah. start to issue bonds. So I think for, um, money coming from the developed world that wishes to invest in Africa, it now has a choice. It can invest in private equity, it can invest in listed equity, yeah. and it can now invest in sovereign bonds and possibly corporate bonds. Right. Mauritius has a really good opportunity to establish itself as a, as a nexus for the flow of funds from America, from right. Europe, from the Far East, from China, to root itself through Mauritius, yeah. invest in funds that are based here, yeah. and, and get exposure to the, 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 the growing African success story in is this it way. A, is it a strategy to go for that wide range of financial services, or perhaps to go for particular or niche uh, markets in, inside the financial services themselves? I think Africa or the leading economies in Africa are still at relatively early stages of financial sophistication. Yeah. And therefore going direct to the country isn't often the answer. Mm. It's coming through a destination like Mauritius, which because of its double taxation agreements, investor protection, plus all the things Jean-Claude mentioned about legal um, stability, political stability, it's, yeah. it's got a really interesting opportunity at this stage where things are just starting to take off in an African context mm -hmm. to, to really position itself to attract and manage yeah. this flow of foreign direct investment that yeah. is now being presented with a range of asset classes. Yeah. Um, to think that foreign investment is only going to be interested in equity or one class of private equity or one yeah. class of, of, of sovereign bonds or corporate bonds, I think they're interested in everything and therefore the more products that Mauritius can offer okay. to the, this the, the flow of foreign money that is interested in participating in the African growth story, yeah. the better it is for Mauritius. Absolutely. 
Yeah, well, as I told you earlier, the stock exchange is putting a lot of emphasis yeah. on players and products. Yeah. And uh, we have the South African Joe Burger ex uh, Stock Exchange, and they are. That's already big, attracting right? the equity side of it, so they the are bond side of it. Yeah. But uh, I believe this is healthy competition. Because even if they are there, they, we provide the same sort of very stringent auditing. Yeah. We provide in terms of transparency, similar things, if not better. Mm -hmm. The only difference would be the size. But Mauritius, throughout its history, has developed an export-oriented approach <coughs> in its policy. Mm. Right? And in the financial sector, we know, we realize that the financial, the domestic market yeah. is too exiguous. Mm. So we have to be always outward looking. Yeah. And Africa next door is growing, yeah. and we are taking steps to move in that direction, yeah. to create for the private sector the sort of synergy and propitious conditions in terms of jurisdiction, in terms of legislation, and even other facilities. Yeah. Because you see, it's, it's in line with also maybe here we have not been that successful as we wanted in the educational sector as well yeah. you can see the diversion of discipline uh, the diversity of discipline but we want to raise the standard to support yeah. a sector that is growing are there lessons from the south african perspective on security exchanges regulation perhaps given south africa's ranking by the world economic forum at number one globally um, it's very difficult for me to say without knowing w what are the challenges South Africa faced sure. and, and what we as Mauritius as a jurisdiction would face. But what I would like to come back to is what you've mentioned. Do we want to be a niche or do we want to do everything? Yeah. You know, it's, as we go along, this, we don't know where we are going to do, what's the destination. We're going to build it as we go along. Yeah. And for that purpose, we have a number of events in Mauritius the mining conference, we have the private equity conference, mm -hmm. we have the Islamic banking conference. As we go along, we will know. For example, we could be a very good destination for custodianship because of the stability. Mm -hmm. We could be a good destination for wealth management because of the educated people. So, sure. And obviously, when we have the skilled people coming in, in Mauritius, to live and work in Mauritius, and I think that would shape or our policy eventually. We're running out of time, but I need to ask you if uh, perhaps a bond exchange is also on the cards, Pan-African bond exchange. Yes, yes, uh, the, uh, a bond exchange is on the card also. When? Absolutely. Uh, the bond exchange would probably be around uh, quarter three, 2016. Okay, so a year after, after the, the establishment of the yes. Pan-African Stock Exchange. Yes. With that thought, we have unfortunately to leave it there. We have run out of time. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for chatting to us about Mauritius, a very small island nation. I mean, we're talking about what? 2,040 square kilometers, 1.3 million people, but we're talking about a G GDP per capita of 15,649 and a country that has been growing for the past 416 years. Thank you for joining us.